You may have heard that the real estate market is super hot because it is. Is 2022 the year that you are going to make your move and put your home on the market and finally cash in? Or is it cash out? I can never remember. Anyway, today we're going to talk about selling your home in 2022 and the dilemma that that poses. I didn't know if you know there was a dilemma to selling your home, even in a hot seller's market like we're in. Today we're going to talk about that and I'm going to give you seven things you can do to make sure that you can make that next move, get into that next house and do everything without a hitch. This is Monday Mornings with Mark. Hi, I'm your host, Mark J. Schmidt of Remax Country and MoveMeMark.com, where I help you get the most out of the real estate market and your home. If you're new here, be sure to like this video, comment, subscribe, and hit that bell so you don't miss out. You may have seen that the real estate market is super hot. Homes are selling quickly and there's a lot of buyers out right now. And that brings us to our dilemma that there are a lot of buyers out right now. And that means when you sell your home, it's pretty easy to find a buyer for your home. It's not as easy to find your next home. That is the challenge that we're having in this market. So today I've got seven things I want to share with you that are going to help you have the best move possible. So before we even get into them, how did we get here? Why is there such a, a, uh, a heavy skew towards the seller side in this market? Well, what happened was the pandemic hit, as you're aware, and this actually caused a lot of people in like larger cities like New York to say, you know what? I don't want to live with a bunch of people around me. I want to move out to the suburbs of New Jersey. So they all came out to New Jersey and the challenge was that we had all these buyers come down from New York. We also had buyers here in New Jersey who wanted to buy a home. And then we also had homeowners who said, gee, you know what? This pandemic hit, there's a lot of uncertainty. I'm not sure I want to sell my home just yet. So homes that normally would have gone on the market did not go on the market. That's why we have such an imbalance of buyers to sellers. So a lot of people due to this are thinking, well, we've got a bubble. We really don't have a bubble. You know, the, the bubble that happened in the early 2000s happened because there was a lot of speculation. People were just buying homes because they said, hey, my gosh, I got to get in while the going is good. Uh, and, and there were a lot of loans made to people who probably shouldn't have gotten loans. Uh, lending standards were a lot more lax back then. Now we have much tighter lending standards. Right now we're seeing a lot more people putting uh, good amounts of money down on homes instead of buying with like, you know, zero money down or, or uh, very, very low down payments. And, you know, the other thing is that we actually do have supply and demand. This is just a tremendous amount of demand in the market and not enough supply. So I don't see this as a bubble. So that's good. You know, it's going to keep home prices, you know, kind of firm. The air might come out of the market a little bit, but I don't see a, a crash that would be associated with a bubble. Now, that being said, with such an imbalance in the market, what can you do to make sure that you have a successful move and you're able to sell your home, get the most you can for it, and then get into your next home? Now, the first thing you want to do, and it's always the first thing you want to do, is you want to speak to a lender and get pre-approved for a mortgage. Now, notice I said pre-approved. I didn't say get pre-qualified. There's a difference between a pre-qualification and a pre-approval. A pre-qualification is where you talk to a lender and, and basically they run your credit, they find out what your credit score is, and then maybe you'll tell them how much you earn and what kind of debt you have, but that's about it. They're not doing any of the hard work, which includes you sending in your tax returns, sending in pay stubs, things of that nature, all the documents that they need in order to properly approve you for a mortgage. Now, the benefit to you in actually getting pre-approved is that when you put an offer on a home, that homeowner who's considering your offer is going to see that, wow, this person has actually been fully pre-approved. Uh, they've handed in all their documents. It's not just a, a case of the, uh, the lender just took your word for how much money you made. You actually proved how much money you make, uh, how much you have in savings, what kind of debt you have, and Sometimes you can actually go right through underwriting. Uh, my lender, Alfredo Feigelmuller with Prime Lending, he can actually put you right through underwriting so that it's pretty much like having a cash offer. All you need to do is find a house. You are fully approved for that loan. All that's missing is the home. So get pre-approved first before you start looking at anything. 
Now, the second thing you want to do is you want to price your home right. Now, you might be wondering, what does that have to do with finding my next home? Well, you want to price your home right because you want to make sure that your home is as attractive as possible to as many buyers as possible. You see, when you have more buyers looking at your home, you have a greater chance of getting multiple offers. And with multiple offers comes options. You have the ability to choose which of those buyers is going to be the best fit for what you're trying to do. So we're going to talk about that a little bit more in a bit, but price your home right and make sure you get as much interest as possible. And that interest is going to translate into offers. Number three, you want to let potential buyers know that you might need some extra time finding your next home. Now, it's so much easier having a home sale if everybody is on the same page. So if there are buyers out there and they need to get into a house in the next 45 days, you might not be the right option for them. Why waste your time with them? Have your agent put in listing, like I've done this, I've put in listings before that, you know, a seller is looking for an extended uh, closing date. Because then those buyers know, okay, listen, if I've got a, a, if I need a 45 day closing, this is not the house for me. But if you've got someone who is in a month to month lease, or if they're living with family members and they don't have to move out quickly, uh, those people are going to be in more of a position to let you have that extra time you need. So let the buyers know up front so that the right buyers can come see your home. Number four is consider a use and occupancy. A use and occupancy is where you close on your home, but then the buyer agrees to allow you to stay for a certain amount of time after the closing. So if you need to stay for a month or two months, whatever the buyer and you can agree on, get that done up front. Let them know that, hey, I'm willing to close, but I'm going to need to stay for a little while longer to find my next home or even to close on my next home. Now, this doesn't come for free. Basically, you're going to become a renter in the home you just previously owned. Now, typically, if the amount of time you're spending in, in your home is less than a month, what they'll do is they'll prorate uh, the amount that you'll pay. So they'll take the mortgage that the buyer would be paying, divide it by 30, and that would be your per day rate. Uh, if you're going to be staying for a month or two months, they'll probably just have you pay the mortgage amount uh, on behalf of the buyer. So a use in occupancy, a great way that you can stay in the home a little longer, but your buyer can close and not have any issues with their interest rate expiring or, uh, or any other of the little hiccups that can occur during a home sale. Number five, be open to renting. You may not find your perfect dream home right out of the gate, but if you're open to renting, you may be able to find something you just go into for either a short amount of time or just say, listen, I'll stay for a year or whatever. But be open to renting because it will give you more options when it comes down to buying your next home. First, you're going to be able to see more homes that are on the market. And second, uh, you're going to be in a better situation because you're already going to have closed on your home. You're going to have all the proceeds from your sale in the bank, and you're not going to have a home sale contingency dangling over you that might make the homeowner of the home you want to buy nervous. You want to keep them as comfortable as possible. So renting can be a great option to make that next purchase that much easier. Now, number six, if you're still nervous and you're like, gee, I don't want to be homeless. I'm not sure I want to rent. I, you know, there's too many variables here. Then you can use a home purchase contingency. Basically you put in your listing, you know, the uh, sale is contingent upon the seller finding suitable housing. This gives you a, the ability to get out of the home sale if you can't find something that you like. Now, it's kind of a double-edged sword with doing this because many buyers will see that you have a contingency that you need to purchase something that gives you the right to get out of the contract and they may not want to get involved in something like that. You know, because basically they could, think about this, they could go and uh, get into a contract to, with you to buy your home they could hire an attorney, they could go through attorney review, have a home inspection, have an appraisal, and then you could say, well, you know what? We can't find the home we want to buy, so we're going to kill the deal. They could be out a lot of money, and that's why those contingencies can make buyers a little nervous. So really my suggestion is only use a home purchase contingency if you really have to or if you're really that nervous. Uh, they can still work, uh, but like I said, they're a double-edged sword. Be very careful with them. Now, number seven, 
This one is not going to be for everyone, and I totally get that, but if you can swing it, if you have the financial ability, buy your next home first and then sell your home. Now again, this comes right back to what I said at the beginning of this video, which is get pre-approved first. You speak to a lender and the lender can tell you if you'll actually be able to do that. Some of you may have money set aside in the bank, which you could use for your down payment. Uh, there are other ways that you can get money in terms of you know, uh, utilizing 401ks and, and things of that nature. But if you have the ability to buy your next home before you sell, it's definitely a much easier way for you to make your move because you can then take your time, find the home that's right for you, and then once you close, you could actually have your house completely empty and then put it on the market. It makes things a lot easier. Again, it's not for everyone, but it can be a really good option if you have it available to you. So that's it. Let's go over the seven steps one more time. First, Get pre-approved for your mortgage before you do anything. Number two, price your home right. Number three, let potential buyers know ahead of time that you may need to spend extra time in your home. Number four, consider using a use in occupancy. Number five, be open to renting. Number six, if you're nervous, use a home purchase contingency. And number seven, if you can swing it, buy your next home first and then sell your home. Using these ideas is a great way to take the pressure off and help you have a successful move in 2022. Now listen, if you have questions about selling your home, if you have questions about any part of the market, there's a fantastic resource. It's my website. You can find me at www.movememark.com. Thanks so much for watching. If you missed our last episode, I've got it right here for you. And here's another episode that YouTube thinks you should watch. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit that circle and subscribe so you don't miss out. And I'll see you next time for more Monday Mornings with Mark. You have a great week.